secretly rooting for Morphe to just Sephira out of the competition. <laughs> Please! We're coming down to the top four of season 16 and ain't nothing lazy about these Susans. I'm Anna Rumor with Pop Culture. And I'm Nick Valdez from comicbook.com. And this is Social Call, where we offer up our unfiltered opinions about RuPaul's Drag Race, because what happens in Vegas definitely doesn't stay in Vegas. We're going in on the 13th episode of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. It is the dreaded makeover challenge. Nick, what did you think? Were you seeing the family resemblance this week? Oh, I love the makeover challenges. I, as soon as really? we found out this, yeah, like I, I love them. I'm a big sucker for them. Mostly because I, I love seeing whoever they get. It, that's part of the whole experience is seeing someone new get into drag for the first time and it, getting seeing their experience evolve and we've seen some people in the past really take to it and you know we've seen some other results here it was just it was it was fun like it was a fun week to do it you know top five is a good place to do it because it's not you know not a lot of queens who could go one way or the other but as we've seen uh yeah this could go really poorly for some uh see i don't like the makeover challenges typically <laughs> because i feel like like many challenges in Drag Race, but, but more than the rest of them, there's not a particular rubric for success. So I always feel like the producers are just kind of like getting the last queen that they don't want in the top whatever out of there with the makeover challenge. And I feel like that kind of happened in this episode. I have bestowed her with the name Lazy Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just talk about the makeovers themselves though, because we are making over the dancers from Drag Race Live in Vegas. And I thought that was a really fun choice because they already are stage personas. So they, they had a little bit more oomph than some of our past participants. It's like when uh, the Drag Race crew got involved with these. It's it's yeah. someone who knows fully well what they're jumping into and what they're getting into and already has a baseline experience with drag queens and their style and what kind of transformation they're going to need. So here, yes, it, it was, it's great seeing, you know, and another plug for, <laughs> for Track Race Live, you know. <laughs> Just another one and Monopoly, randomly yeah. enough. Uh, <laughs> we had lots of plugs in this week's episode. All right, so let's get into these actual runway presentations once our dancers have been all zhuzhed up and put in drag. First up on the runway, we had Q with her daughter, Luna, and they come out in this kind of like ooky, spooky um, monster look. What did you think about that, Nick? I did not feel the energy. You know, I knew we were going, like you said, you mentioned the crystal method route. I thought we were going that route again with like, okay, you know, do, someone's doing a little oddball thing while everyone does glamor and it would stand out. But seeing the final result, I don't know. Like I'm kind of, I kind of warmed up to it. You know, maybe it's because, you know, combined with like the dancing and like it just, just the, the, the fashion itself, it, it kind of, it, it worked for me. Like it, it ultimately worked. Yeah. And see, this is why the makeover challenges are tough for me because like, do I like the looks specifically? Not really. Do they work well together as a makeover challenge? Yes. They work together yes. quite well. So I'm like, what am I supposed to even judge on? Like, yes, I think that's successful, but I I don't love the looks, but I don't really love any of these looks. So it's, it's tough to kind of nail down what I'm supposed to be looking at. Oh my God, that's a great point. Cause this, yeah, like uh, the makeovers this week, that's the other thing. Like uh, the Queens themselves weren't looking their best either. Right, right. right. Uh, it's kind of different a little bit when Morphine walks down the runway with her daughter, Latina, um, because Morphine always looks beautiful. She's in this red stunning gown. Latina's in this gold gown. And I really did like those looks, but again, they're not anything like special. I totally agree. And that's the thing. It's you know, when it comes to a makeover, right? And, and mm -hmm. family resemblance, I do feel like Morphine and Latina had the most family resemblance because yeah. Latina's face was like, 
just like Morphine's. Absolutely gorgeous. So, yeah. you know, Morphine was not kidding when she said she was a makeup artist. She did this for others. Like, she knows what she's doing. My thing, though, is I don't know how to feel about the, the criticism of it because... You know, she, uh, like, Latina was muscular. She had that musculature. She had that bigger frame. And they do say, you know, it's it's the classic drag idea of, like, hiding the, you know, the more manly side of things, you know, just yeah. for lack of a better term, you know, like, hide your broad shoulders, hide it. But... I don't know. See, because that's the yeah. thing. Like we we've we've seen people with all sorts of body types. We've seen queens with all sorts of body. We've had queens like like Cameron Michaels in the past yes. who have that body type and who are aren't afraid to show off that like the like the form they worked for. Like this is mm -hmm. this is the body they want, you know? And like Latina kind of has that. It gave me that energy of like, yeah, this is the body she wants and this is the body she would be like awesome with and so and you know and she did like she had the the natural bbl basically yeah. so you know i i do feel like it, it worked and that's that's part of also why i agree with you and that there might have been some production shenanigans here so <laughs> talking about that critique a little bit more though like i agree with you because i thought she looked fantastic i mean like the arms are on point like yeah. she looks so good the only part of the critique where i was like yes this is where i see it i think they needed bigger hair yeah to there go. we go yeah because it was it, yes. it did get a little bit like like glam, 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 like beautiful, like big muscles, and then like not a ton going on up top. So it just looked a little like imbalanced visually, but I mean, she looked hot. So I, I was very surprised at the level of critique that this look got. And it kind of goes for Nymphia too, speaking of a producer shenanigans, uh, because Nymphia walks out with her daughter, Juanita Wind, and they come yes. out these cute little <laughs> Birds of a feather, blah, 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 love that, super cute. And then uh, T.S. Madison, who I love and will never say anything negative about ever, is like, you know what? I wish you hadn't worn the yellow this week, Nymphia, but I guarantee you if Nymphia had worn the lilac, instead they would have been like, well, you know, it's a branding challenge and why weren't you wearing yellow? Right? Mm, yeah, it's a tough position to be in because I I do agree with T.S. Madison in that, you know, we, we say this all the time. It's, oh, she wore yellow again. And every yeah. time she doesn't wear yellow, we get fantastic results from it. Like, I bet if she would have come out in the lilac look, we would have been like, oh, Nymphia, she's so great again. And likely would have also said, oh, but your twin is in your standard yellow. You always do yellow. So it was, yeah, yeah I, I really think you're right in that it would have just happened either way. Like yeah. she, that would have been a critique for her either way. Overall though, colors aside, I think this was a really successful look. I think it was super cute. I think their little bird dance on the runway was well choreographed. Like I, I thought this was very solidly near the top for me. Yeah, it was it was a fun idea. I, I totally thought you know, if it wasn't near the top that she was just fine this week. Like she, she was in no danger. You know who was in danger though? And I was shocked to see it. Safira and Shakira Crystal, because my God, what were they wearing? This is uh, so bad. Safira, was that Maya's entrance look? Absolutely, it can't be. absolutely it, was. No, it can't be, right? Like, no way. It was, it totally <laughs> was. People were doing side by sides and there's no way. And honestly, Maya owed her an outfit after yeah. all of the help that Safira offered her throughout the season. So good on her, but I didn't like the outfit on Maya. So I definitely didn't like seeing it a second time on Safira. Seeing Safira stumble so hard right towards the end, it's it's heartbreaking. It definitely is because either, either this could be the big, you know, a winner at it where she has a full redemption and by the end like oh she tripped right near the finish line and then makes it over and she wins or this is the beginning of the end right and it's it's tough because she carries it too it's just i i know that outfit wasn't hers it was an outfit that plain jane had but she could have done 
something to it, right? Like it, it wasn't even that. It was like the the like the hair too. Just it, I, I felt bad for Shakira. I really felt bad for her that this is like this is the makeover she got. Where it's just you know I mean un unfortunately because it is plain Jane's look, uh, it looks plain. Like it just and Safira too. Just oh. Not a great week. No, and I know they were trying to go with kind of like the pageant mother, pageant girl storyline, like truly like pulling that out of their butt because they really didn't have anything. And I wish that they would have just stayed with the original idea. Safira had this like beautiful geode gown that she was going to wear. And, and but she was like, oh, well, I won't be able to dance in it. Who cares? I, the look is more important than we don't even know about how much that little dance on the runway even matters. I would much rather the look be cohesive instead of this big orange mess than yeah. what we got. I think maybe the dancing played like 15% into the critiques. Yeah. Because when we got the critiques, it was all family resemblance, final mm -hmm. look, how just how everyone looked in general. It was, I think maybe like we got like one or two mentions of the dance itself. And the dance was only like a, like a minute. Like it wasn't yeah. even like a long thing that, uh, I mean, I guess when you're in the thick of it, maybe it seemed like such a bigger ordeal than it was in the edit. But I, I kind of wish he just went full rock dress or whatever she was planning yeah because you know and just moved her arms or something right <laughs> like, <laughs> true I, she gets in her own head we can see that with the immunity potion earlier this yes. season and it makes me nervous as we head towards the finale because i she, as you all know if you're watching the show safira is my winner so girl <laughs> pull it together <laughs> yes oh my god also heading towards that finale though is plain jane with her daughter and let's pause for the best drag name we've heard in a while lazy susan <laughs> yes uh, my sweet sweet lazy <laughs> i love that name this great lazy susan <laughs> this name tickled RuPaul so much that she won before they even did the makeover. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, like, playing one with the reveal of the name, I... I don't know how the other queens felt in the room, but I know if I were there, I, I'd be like, oh, okay, so I should just go home. <laughs> okay. What's the point? We've got Lazy Susan over here. That's so, so, Lazy Susan and Plain Jane is such an iconic duo. And I mean, they looked iconic coming down the runway. It was giving me Kill Bill. They looked at you. Lazy Susan was really into it. They looked oh. really uh, like hot and fly together. Yeah, totally. Like in terms of total transformation and what you're looking for with the makeover challenges, right? Like Lazy Susan definitely delivered. I, I don't know about the looks themselves, yeah. Like, I, I'm not sure if I like, like, full twins. Uh, you know, we, we've had good examples in the past of winners like, like Sasha Colby, who had, like, a twin yeah. look, but it wasn't, mm -hmm. like, completely the same. And so here, it's just two of the same outfit. And that's, that was the thing. There are smart differences between the two, but it's still two of the same outfit. And yeah. playing in, once again, this is a silhouette we've seen from playing before a lot of times. It's the same thing with Nymphia, where this is her brand, she stuck to it, Lazy Susan embraced that brand and looked fantastic. Like the details were there. Yeah, again, it's the makeover challenge strikes again. It's like, what am I supposed to be even looking at? Like, I don't, the outfit's fine, but they look like each other and Lazy Susan looks great. So I guess you're doing a good job. Like, I just don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for. <laughs> it feels like the judges don't either because, you know, they, they go back and forth with like, oh, I love the family resemblance with one contestant and their queen. And then in another season, people will do a twin thing and they're like, well, they were just your twin. And I'm like, what, what do you guys want? <laughs> Drives me nuts. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be negative, but I always hate this challenge. No, it makes me so mad. <laughs> I totally understand. And that's the thing. It's such a hard line to walk. And that's why when playing ultimately wins, it... It does make sense, you know? Yeah. Lazy Susan did have the biggest transformation, had the best name. Mm -hmm. Like she she was she had won it before she even stepped out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Monster! Monster! Monster is born! I think in terms of makeovers, that one was the most successful, though mm -hmm. we do have some interesting looks that could have been at the top. Yeah, I think Nymphia could have taken it if they hadn't had a problem with her wearing yellow suddenly out of the blue. Yeah, I think that she could have been the only other winner. Everyone, maybe Q, I don't know. I, Q is not giving me winner energy at this point in the season. So I, I, I'm definitely... <laughs> Sorry to say it, but it's true. <laughs> Plain Jane, the, the sooner we get used to the fact that she's top two, the better. So I yeah. think it's, it's kind of a lock for Plain Jane at this point to make it that far. Safira though, this is a big enough stumble to where they could really go either way. <laughs> I was scared, Nick. Let me tell you, I was so scared <laughs> when she got put in the bottom with morphine because I was like, Ooh. there's no way they're gonna let her go home, right? There's no way, but she did a worse job. But there's no way, she's my winner. She is the winner. I was so nervous they were gonna pull a switcheroo on us, but you know, spoiler alert, they didn't. No baby, I'm here to actually entertain the masses. Safira and Morphine do lip sync to Miss Me More by Kelsey Ballerini. What did you think of this lip sync? Because again, people are really divided here. So this is the first time I've heard this song. And I, so let me just say it's a, it's rad. I love this yeah. song. I was like, yo, this is great. It, it's great a great song. lip, it's, it's a great drag race song too. Like it's a great lip sync song. And so I was nervous though for Safira, you know, that yeah. she took a, like, I get that's her style, like letting her warm up and, and then eventually kicking it off. But, but Morphe right out the gate was like fully full throttle and, and then when Morphine goes to that second gear, it's like, oh, like she's such a great performer. Like there's a reason that she, like she was the only one who defeated Maya and mm -hmm. she's old, like, I, some, I was nervous. I will just say I was nervous. I, I had no idea that this was not a clean win. I will just say that straight out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta say, okay, the first time watching it through, I was like eyes locked to Safira being like, you know what? She's my winner. Look at her. She's slaying. She is mother. She is everything to me. Watching it through again. It's a little blurry who won there, yes, right? Yes. This, this really is would, track, yeah, like track record over actual lip sync winner. Like this is it, and it's not like the a mandatory meeting in Q one where you, they gave Q the win, and you could argue, oh well, Q edged it out there. No, here it was really, it's really muddy. It, it's really uh, morphine is the seasoned favorite. She was our narrator. I'm gonna be so depressed that we're not gonna have her around in the next episode, but it's probably because the show's almost over. <laughs> right, that's kind of where I was confusing myself because it's like Safira should move on. She shouldn't go home. I think we can almost all agree with that. But like, did she slay that lip sync? Kind of. Does Morphine have what it takes to make it to the next level? I don't know. Did she slay that lip sync? Kind of, I don't know. Nick, this is a long way of me saying <laughs> they both kind of did the same and I was still happy that Safira got to stay. I don't, I don't know. And that's the thing is this is tough, but I mean, when you look at it, it's, you kind of have to also include track record. You kind of mm. also have to look at the fact that Morphine's been in the bottom. This is her fourth time. Right. So this is, it was time. Like it, it all kind of led up to this point and it's unfortunate, but I like, I love Morphine. I'm going to be so sad that we just can't look at her anymore. I know yeah. it sounds so bad, but it's like, yo, yeah. I just like, she was, she's, a light on the screen every week. So I I hope, just like Maya, I hope her booking fees are through the roof. I hope mm -hmm. she's gonna be, she is going to be rich and I, I can't wait to, she is an all-stars winner. I'm gonna say oh. that straight out. Morphine, oh. Morphine is, is coming back to win in all-stars. Like if this yes. isn't like a future winner edit, I don't know what is. Like she, she's gonna come in with like the the budget and the looks and the lining that one of the critiques that you always have every week of like. <laughs> she's gonna come back having those outfits lined and her IBS under control and she's yeah. gonna play those girls. <laughs> 
I'm gonna miss her. She's so funny. She's so beautiful. I'm so excited that I get to follow her on Instagram now, now that she's not on the show and won't spoil it for me. Tough, tough to see her go, but great to watch her leave. Next week though, we are coming up to the finale. I think we might do a top three this year, unless it's a no and elimination next week. Uh, cause we're doing memoirs next week. We're gonna have to see how the finale is kind of shaping up next week. And you know that we're gonna be recapping all of it. So, uh, make sure that you like and subscribe down below and head over to popculture.com for more of the latest news. Until next time, thank you so much for tuning in.